I can remember the one time when this friend of mine and myself were sitting up on the hill at Lime Rock watching a race, and I said to Ray, you know, really, I said, there's no reason why uh, I don't think we couldn't get out there and do the same thing. Anybody who sits up on the hillside and watches us have a go at any race can, uh, in fact, do the same thing himself. A fellow can get into a Formula V and with a little imagination, he can believe that he's up with the best of them. The Formula V itself is a race car. It was meant to race. It was meant for competition. It was meant to put on a sports car track. You know, the downhill right as you come onto the straight, it's a, it's a nice turn, you know? It's right on the edge, you know? And boy, he was like doing all kinds of things in that turn, so I figured I'd finally get by him. Yeah, well, I backed off way before yeah, half, before I went into it. Coming down over yeah. the bridge, yeah. boy, I want no But what part. I did, before we got into the turn, I braked, you know, I got way behind him, so that when he braked for the, you know, for the dip, I'd come storming on through and go by him, you know, no, no trouble at all. He got crossed up, he went off on the outside of the road, Corrected. Yeah, and he was correcting for it, you know? He wasn't going off, he was correcting for it. And I could see that, that he was coming back on. I said, oh, Bertus, go. I didn't make it. He came right across the track, and I went right up over his car. Airborne. I didn't hear the Formula V appealed very much because, one, it was a new class. It was starting. The fact that Volkswagen basically is an inexpensive car, and as such, the concept could be transferred right to the track, and so far, it, it has proven out that way. I'd like to get down in the car. I, I, I like to have the feeling of being uh, well, fashion lying down in the car. You're pretty good as far as roll bar heights. You just feel yeah, like you're sitting up. Right. Now the important thing is, where does the firewall come from? I mean, am, am I going to hit it now? If so, I'll have to move up. Fitting oneself into a Formula V can be problems. Most Formula Vs are designed now for fellas about average in height. Before anyone does any serious competition in the car of his choice, he should become comfortable in the car first. One thing I must say for most of the V manufacturers now, and that is their pedal arrangement, their gas pedal, their brake pedal, their clutch pedals are becoming adjustable. Their shift linkages are being put at proper length from the body itself. If you do not fit in the car to begin with, there have to be changes made along the way. The uh, Sports Air Club of America has imposed very, very strict rules regarding the engines. We cannot remove metal from engines, which takes in a multitude of things. We can do very little with the breathing of the car. We have to maintain stock parts. We have to run with a stock carburetor. Very little can be done outside of balancing the engine and uh, fashioning up your own exhaust. How much do you think it's going to add to the engine? Horsepower one. Well, as it sits right now, it's good for at least two horsepower, a little more. And we aren't right? through designing it yet. So. Well, I feel this is the area that we should concentrate in rather than uh, really trying to develop any one area in handling or anything like that. Just a strong and reliable engine. If you get two fellows out there who are extremely competitive and have good machinery, and the other fellow happens to be a half a horsepower up, this could possibly mean perhaps a second a lap or something like this. At the end of a half hour, if there's 20 laps in the race, it's 20 seconds. And you've lost the race by 20 seconds. You know, some go together, some don't. Some are, some are uh, right. fast, some are slow. And you just got to keep them taking them apart, putting them together. It ultimately comes down to how you put the parts together. And believe me, in the last year, we have discovered many, many ways of putting the engine together so that it comes out essentially the same engine, but with a little less friction here and there, or a little more advanced in one stage than the other. However, the point being is that the difference will be whether or not the engine was put together with a little more time and patience on one side than on the other.
this will be the deciding thing. They can tear it down one more time and you can still make the race. Uh, yeah. Of course, the obvious thing is to see whether the engine basically is functioning the way it should, to see how the other fellows are to maintain fairly accurate times on everyone who you feel is competitive with you. Most of the tracks on the East Coast, I'm not going to say I know because you never really know a track. You can always go and learn something else about a track. I've found this true with all the, the tracks that I've been on on the East Coast. Get into what I like to call a groove and, you know, just try to maintain a good, a very, very good time, especially for the start of the race, the grid. You have to be up in the front in Formula V these days in order to be competitive. essentially the same thing. The fact that the Europeans look at it in a different light could have something to do with the individual's attitude on it. But from what I've seen now, it's still the ultimate ability of the individual involved. Then I guess just before the race, it comes down to me, the individual. How excited am I? What goes through my mind? Recently, I've read just before a race, which seems to help a lot. It takes my mind off the race itself and what I should do if I get into a particular situation or something like this. I hope someday to at least run a Formula One race, a Grand Prix race. I think that well, the whole intent of my getting out there and getting into a racing car was not to be better than anybody. It was just to do something as good as I saw someone else do it.
speeds the formula V attains are relatively slow. Now, I mean by this, your V will only attain a top speed of perhaps 105, 110 miles an hour. But if during the process of a race, you can negotiate a 50 mile an hour turn at 49 miles an hour, then you have to feel very competitive. As far as women drivers are concerned, I have no feeling one way or the other on it. I think that if an individual, whether it's male or female, if they have the initiative, if they have the drive, the will to win, I don't see why we couldn't see a woman champion on the grid. The whole point in winning a race is not to win it as fast as you can, but as slow as you can. When it boils down to the last lap sort of thing, it's every man for himself, and whoever makes the best move is the fellow who's going to win. primary to every race, there's what we call tech inspection. It's really a mechanical check to do numerous things. One, it satisfies the officials of the race that your car is technically fit to go out and race. Two, that you're safe in your car, that the roll bar is adequate, and that basically the car is sound. Also, the fact that I have my 
Nomex suit, my helmet meets the safety standards. I have my goggles, my bandana, the gloves are all approved by SCCA. And this is one of the requirements that one has to go through. Sally is behind me 100%. She'll keep the lap charts, she'll keep lap times of not only myself, but how people drive in the race, what they're doing in the race, who dropped out when, exactly who's doing what. He said he doesn't like it because of the pebbles and the rocks and everything that can be thrown up when you have them on. At times, I can see the frustration on Sally's face because I know she puts up with an awful lot. I tend to become caught up in the action at the track, and a lot of times I'll overlook her and what she wants. It's always nice to know that someone is there, and they always are willing to go to any extreme to make it seem just a little more possible for you. What I don't like is this fast the right hand bend here. You know? No, I'm doing good on that one, except I'm still having a little too much oversteer. Oversteer, right. But I, I, I know it's because I don't have enough uh, camber in my mind. You look like you have better camber situation than I do. I'm, I, I'm fine with mine. I think I'll go with exactly what I have here. Practice is there, and if it's not used the right way, you might just as well not go to the race. We spend an awful lot of time between practice and the race itself just working on things that we believe could be a little bit better. And sometimes it pays off and sometimes it doesn't. Last night, last night we worked half the night through, Rich. And, uh... Whenever, I, whenever we do that, uh, I, I think that, okay, it's ready to go. And now we're on the track, and you can see another uh, 20 hours of work ahead of you. I always plan my strategy just after I know where I am on the grid. Of course, this goes back to the fact that it's extremely helpful to know not only the track, but who it is you're going to be racing against. OK, by the time you get around the bowl, then, into, the, into Cappies, all the way down to Cappies, absolutely on the inside the whole way. Go right down into Cappies on the inside. You, I don't mean Cappies, mean, I mean the hairpin. You mean the hairpin. hairpin. On the inside, yeah, right. I can't go there again. Because you can outbreak a couple of guys in, yeah. in the minimum. Yeah. You get a couple of, couple of spaces there. Right. No, this isn't too bad, Ed. Possibly, I'll have to see what happens over here. I don't plan on going to the inside unless I see that it's going to be disadvantageous to me to stay to the outside. If I can see that I can get more cars, and I'll bet I can because everybody, Bill, is going to be in the inside here. Yeah. Right out there, I just uh, I have a feeling. I think I can pick up a few spaces around here. I have fairly, fairly good acceleration. I think I might be able to do it. class itself was formulated as an incentive for drivers to manifest their skill. Now, this being the case, uh, there's not really as much emphasis put on the uh, mechanical aptitude of the car itself. Rather, it's the driver's skill in the end that is going to be the deciding factor here.
the start, till there you picked up six places, till this guy spun in front of you. How about that? So bad. He took off like a rocket. Bad luck, that's all. Yeah, yeah. I can't, you know. You can try to avoid two or three guys, but you can't avoid the hole. Also, there's something. Yeah, there's something amiss. Something is wrong. What is right. it? Right. The wheels. Going around, the wheels couldn't hold it. it. Couldn't yeah, hold it. Better. What are they spinning for? Man, he got this part too. Holy. Wow. As you came around, you could see the guy. wheel going sideways. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, I agree with you. It's kind of, it's got to be luck. I don't drive that bad. <coughs> tell, tell me I don't drive that bad, would you, Tom? Uh, I think perhaps one of the most important assets of anybody who has the will to go on to bigger and better things is the fellow's optimism. You have to. In this particular game, it's almost a necessity to be optimistic about not only this particular race, but about your car. And it's also important to have a good perspective on things. If you lose, you pick up from there and go on. There isn't much you can do. You have to realize that you're not going to win every race you enter. If I can complete the day and complete the race and say that I've done my best, not only with the car, but I have driven a good race and I feel very satisfied with my performance, then I don't think that anything else is left. I think that's the answer right there. The stuff that's a matter with my car is just so small, such little stuff. It looked good. See, the I... car basically is really strong. Yeah. By the time VIR comes around, two weeks from now, we can switch cars and we can set them up together. I mean, Possibly before VIR, I'll have a chance to go up to Lime Run okay. for a day. It's a good thing you had a universal point on that steering wheel.